is our next speaker session. So I hope all of you are geared up and ready for it as I welcome Ms. Richa Arora, Managing Partner and CEO, ESG Stewardship Services, eCube Investment Advisors. Ms. Richa has recently joined eCube Investment Advisors as Managing Partner and CEO, ESG Stewardship Services. In this entrepreneurial venture, it is to drive the strategy and implementation of environmental social governance assessment and engagement. Prior to eCube, Richa was with the Tata Group, where as a COO, she led the transformation of the consumer business of Tata Chemicals, launching Tata Sampan, and building the foods portfolio beyond salt. In her last role at the Tata Group as President Packaged Foods, Tata Consumer Products Limited, she was responsible for driving the packaged foods business in India. Today, here on this forum, she will be speaking on the topic of new frontiers, how in-housing is changing digital marketplace. So a very warm welcome to Richa and I welcome you on screen. Thank you uh, so much for that uh, introduction, Kathy, and uh, good evening to all and a pleasure to be here at uh, Exchange for Media's eTech Munch. Uh, my sincere compliments first to the team at uh, Exchange for Media for keeping the attention and learning on digital as an ongoing agenda. It is much required uh, in the uh, you know, ever-changing digital landscape, which uh, I caught the tail end of the previous panel discussion. Uh, so this is something which is not constant. Uh, and I think everyone's trying to uh, learn from everybody. And this forum is a great place to do that. So happy to share my thoughts. So when we talk about in-housing, uh, for me, it was you know, interesting to see some of the data there. Uh, globally, 70 to 80% of the firms have moved to in-housing, the technology that uh, really serves uh, digital marketing. Uh, there's no kind of really published data in India, but I would imagine that it will be lower than 70 to 80%. But the trend towards it is I would say in some ways unmistakable. Certainly many of the large players have already moved in this direction or are in the process of uh, doing so in the coming um, you know, months and years. And I, I think uh, many will follow suit. Uh, and I think this is happening because as organizations go up the learning curve on digital and want to connect uh, more uh, uh, em uh, emphatically and empathetically with consumers, in housing, uh, in some sense, comes into play. So when we say how in housing is changing digital marketing, all the reasons why in housing is gathering momentum are also pointers to the impact of in housing on digital marketing, on how it's really changing digital marketing. And as I see it, there are five distinct advantages there of, of in housing. Uh, the first one is what I call one data. You know, it is uh, in a lot of ways imperative for all the technologies used in digital marketing, whether it's the ad servers, the DSP, the DMPs, to talk to each other. If data is sitting separately, the utility of that data is uh, severely limited. You know, we know we live in an era of uh, uh, in information and data explosion. It's very easy to generate vast streams of data today. But different data sources need to talk to each other and they need to be well integrated in order to maximize uh, the utility of the data and the impact therefore that the data can create. So data integration and that one uh, view on data is, is, is prime. And I think in housing enables that to happen more uh, effectively and efficiently. The second part is also a data related aspect. And that is of course the access to first party data which in housing in a lot of ways uh, kind of cements and uh, you know with with the uh, with the way virtual ways of living and working and uh, increasing number of companies going the direct consumer way and uh, setting up their own online platforms for purchase beyond availability in e-commerce platforms this ownership of first party data becomes even more uh, vital so it's really about uh, you know, being very sharply in tune with the marketing funnel at every stage of the consumer uh, uh, cycle and journey, uh, which becomes therefore more efficient when you have the first party data because your targeting is much sharper and, and much focused. 
I think there's a there's a bit of a softer aspect here, if I may call it that. Um, but it it's critical because uh, I, I believe that having the data in house also encourages more experimentation with data, because um, you know the the creativity of exploration, the slicing and dicing of the data uh, to understand uh, drivers of behavior and buying will will happen a lot more when you have the data sitting there. And given the fact that consumer behavior and buying is so dynamic today and digital, how they interact with it and, and kind of um, consume that medium is, is evolving every day. So data immersion uh, uh, will lead to data mining, which will lead to more creative solutions, uh, I believe more impactful solutions and more efficient solutions. Uh, so this whole aspect of access to first party data, this whole softer aspect of, you know, immersion in data, which is there in house uh, is, uh, is the way forward with uh, it leading to uh, a lot more impactful and efficient solutions. Uh, the third aspect, uh, you know, and data, you know, as I said, there's, there's lots of data available. But uh, when you marry that data immersion with brand immersion, uh, you get sharper, more meaningful messaging. You get greater uh, you know, brand impact, which will over a period of time lead to better ROI. So really the third area is about brand, brand integration and how we are able to use that data when you have, uh, you know, with, with in-housing, that becomes a lot more integral to the brand and a lot more integral to the brand and, and marketing teams. And again, here, I think whether to call it a softer aspect or not, while we talk a lot about artificial intelligence and machine learning, there is a lot to be said about human learning. And uh, when you have an in-house team, which has you know, to begin with a shared vision of the brand, uh, and they're the custodians of the brand and their understanding uh, of, of what, is, what are the kind of key buttons on the brand is uh, very, very sharp. And then you have the constant flow of uh, integrated data. I think the ability of the marketing teams to sharpen messages for a wide range of cohorts will improve dramatically over time. And so, you know, it's not three segments or four segments. There are cohorts. I mean, really, market of one is what uh, is, uh, is 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 going to be there for uh, many categories. So, human learning will be sharper and faster within housing. And uh, people who are ahead on this journey do testify to the fact that, uh, yes, they do find a qualitative difference in the quality of insights and the quality of therefore uh, connects which are designed uh, when, when there is in-housing. Um, I, I would say these are the primary uh, and big benefits uh, in a lot of ways. And the other benefits uh, are what are unsaid in some ways in, in what I have shared till now. It's uh, if you read between the lines, the benefits will pop out at you. And one of them is the speed of response, right? So when you have uh, brand custodians who are steeped in the brand, when you have data on tap, when you kind of build that along with the machine learning, the human learning, uh, then you know, there, there is a synergy and a seamless understanding in teams with respect to data, brand, market connections. Things are bound to happen faster. Programs are likely to be implemented faster. There are going to be fewer iterations. Uh, yes, a lot of this is iterative thinking, uh, but the, the, the uh, iterations which happen, I think, externally and multiple iterations, I think those are some, some of the things which uh, in housing kind of takes away the pain of some of that. So I think agility is one of the big benefits, so to say, of in housing, uh, especially when the environment companies are operating in are changing uh, very fast today and consumers are changing very fast and technology and digital space is, I don't know how to describe it, is changing uh, faster than fast. Uh, and uh, speed of res response uh, becomes uh, therefore a key uh, benefit of uh, in-housing. I think the fifth and the last element I, I want to touch upon is uh, transparency and costs. Uh, 
there usually is a lot of uh, chatter and talk on cost reduction and uh, some of this of that would actually come over a period of time because there are upfront investments uh, which need to be made to get the in housing system going uh, the equally important change uh, which which happens with in housing is that the costing becomes transparent and actually the cost reduction happens because of greater transparency in an outsourced model there is usually one cost which may not be disaggregated uh, for you because uh, you know there's a, there's a data cost there's a people cost there's a deployment cost you don't know how much is what uh, when you don't know uh, how much is what you don't know where the where the savings will come from and whether there is a potential for saving so greater savings come not just by themselves but they come from the transparency which is uh, inevitable when 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 you know you move uh, in house um again the other uh, not so apparent advantage uh, not so apparent saving uh, uh, is with respect to the time cost of people you know uh, many of you in in brand and marketing streams uh, would would know that a lot of time gets spent in coordinating and chasing things with multiple external partners anyway i'm not i'm not just talking about digital i'm saying in general you know that's this large part of the brand and marketing teams work and the breadth and spread of the digital ecosystem being what it is the pressure on time uh, gets um, in a lot of ways even uh, more acute here so the, the if you look at the opportunity cost of the time of teams there would be you know immense savings and freeing up of time to do uh, a lot more uh, on the marketing uh, front more productively so in some in housing helps businesses by integrating data uh, better by owning the first party data by being able to integrate that with the brand needs seamlessly and in uh, uh, a very quick time uh, there is more human learning uh, there is deeper con consumer understanding more creative solutions uh, as team engage uh, with more uh, data and insights on an ongoing basis it's like happening in real time you have a thought which comes to your mind you want to explore it and um, you know there's nothing stopping you from uh, kind of running that in the system and coming up with a solution on a real time basis and with that of course as i said come cost efficiencies and, and greater transparency but you know when i was kind of reflecting on this um, uh, kind of putting my thoughts down for for uh, this session in many ways i found that the core to in housing uh, is the idea of communication i don't mean brand communication you know all the benefits uh, which accrue to in housing uh, is because in a lot of ways uh, it's helping improve communications all around it's communication across data sources it's communication across data and teams its communication with external partners uh, becoming a lot more sharper because there is a you know uh, the, the, it's a it's a narrower um, uh, piece which you are uh, connecting with them on and ultimately this would lead to improvement in communication on brands and communication on, on digital on brands which is really the the, the goal of uh, uh, all this um, so a lot lot of things going for in housing but i would like to end with two words of caution on in housing uh, one uh, is when you know companies are getting into in housing uh, and and the second is for you know when when you are you are in the middle of in housing and what could be the challenges there so one when when companies getting into in housing i think clarity of what is required is critical it's uh, one has heard and experienced also that while there's a lot of talk about in housing and everyone is keen to get it going but the clarity on the scope of what exactly is required in that particular uh, environment for that particular organization uh, it needs to be there as also how the benefits will be extracted and what will be the investment should be required whether it's the people front or the technology front to be able to do that so and that can be a bit of a slippery slope so clarity of purpose right at the beginning is um, very invaluable to a successful in housing um, uh, 
uh, of the technology uh, program which kind of undertakes that. The second portion in, in housing is that once you move towards in housing, doesn't mean that you will not need an external ecosystem. You know, in housing at its extreme could lead to some kind of tunnel vision because, you know, you're only kind of interacting with your data and your teams. Uh, what needs to be in-house and where independent external counsel is required could, uh, you know, vary from organization to organization and that needs to be thought through. Uh, the arena of digital, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of struggle to describe it sometimes, but it seems like an amoeba, which is like changing shape every day. And an external ecosystem, which one can tap into for ideas, trends, what early adopters are doing, what others in the business are doing, would be of immense value, even when uh, you know companies are moved towards in-housing. It, it should not get assumed that in-housing will work like a magic wand and be the solution to all problems. So external counsel, which complements internal machine learning and human learning will help hit the sweet spot. Uh, despite the notes of caution, there is a lot going for in housing, as I have just shared. I, I'm actually reminded uh, of uh, the analogy of the law of what is called the law of the unattainable triad, which says that we always want the best quality at the lowest cost in the shortest possible time. The law, of course, postulates that uh, it is not possible to, to, to have all three things together, which is why it's called uh, the law of the unattainable triad. And we experience it in everyday life. I mean, quick example of hiring. If you, if you have a budget constraint and you want the best quality, it is going to take you time to find that resource, right? Uh, but but in-housing seems to be the only exception to the law of the unattainable triad because uh, it helps you to uh, reach the customers with the right quality message and reach them faster at more optimal cost. Uh, so, you know, a lot going for in-housing. Uh, just be mindful of a few things along the way. So that, that's all I had to share, uh, Kathy. Thank you so much, Richa. Your anecdotes and analogies, I'm sure, have been appreciated by all our viewers because such... Uh, wisdom has to be put across to our viewers when, as you said, amoeba is something that keeps evolving. We don't know where it's going, how it is. And that is how this entire digital forum in housing is going towards. So thank you so much for your insight.